Please, how long can an international student work in Norway and will the salary be sufficient to fund your education and live in, in Norway? Besides, is it easy to get a job? This is a very interesting question. International students are allowed to work for 20 hours per week during school period and they are allowed to work full time during vacations. As I've said in one of my videos, working full time during vacation doesn't mean you would have an office job and you're going to work full time. No, that's not what the full time means. The full time means that you can work for more than 20 hours unrestricted. So you can work up to 40 hours, some people even work 100 hours a week. No one is going to penalize you for that. But now the main issue is during school hours, 20 hours per week during school hours. I'll give you a brief breakdown right now. To my best knowledge, there is no minimum wage in Norway, at least for um, part-time jobs or students' jobs. There is no minimum wage. You're just, sometimes you're offered whatever the business wants to offer you, but sometimes it's not less than 100 kroners. So 100 kroners is approximately $10. So you're not given 100 kroners though. At least you should be earning some jobs pay 105, some 110 kroners, some 150 kroners, some 160 kroners. And because you're coming from outside of Norway, you are assumed to not have work experience in Norway. So your work, we don't, I'm not saying we, they don't care if you have a PhD from where you're coming from and you come into the country. You are going to start from the base wage. So let's say for instance you're going to be earning 140 kroners. Let's just say 150 kroners per hour. That's what you should be earning when you start. Some people earn less than that because you're a student and they believe you don't even speak the language so they're just going to give you whatever. So say 150 kroners worst case scenario. So you're supposed to work 20 hours a week. I'm just going to grab my calculator and then we'll do the math. So I have my old calculator here. 150 kroners times 20 hours a week is going to be 3,000 kroners a week. And 3,000 kroners a week times 4 should be 12,000 kroners. So you're supposed to pay tax. So if you're earning 12,000 kroners, let's say you'll be paying tax of 10%. So that's 1,200 in tax. So 12,000 minus 1,200 kroners is 10,800 kroners. If you're working complete 20 hours a week, so you're supposed to be having 10,800 kroners, your rent per month should be about, worst case, 4,500 that's the least you would get anywhere and that's if you struggle to get student housing so minus 4,500 that's 6,300 is what's left this is if you're working complete 20 hours a week and most times you do not get job on campus so you would have to travel from your house so say you're going to be around the same zone you should be having so the transportation for one zone should be around 500 kroners so 6300 minus 500 kroners is 5800 kroners so let's say you're able to save this 5800 kroners for say 10 months times 10 meaning you're going to be having 58000 kroners for 10 months, if you're saving 5,800 for 10 months, 58,000. And this is if you're working 20 hours a week. So let's say you're going to get the rest menu from long vacation where you can work 40 hours per week. I don't think it's possible. So the best advice I'd give is for you to have some sort of income before you come into the country because this amount, 58,000, cannot even fund your living expense. It means when you fall sick, where are you going to get the money from? Because the days you fall sick, you can't go to work and you're not paid for that. I'll do a part two of this video because it's getting longer. So this is a part two of if you can work in Norway to pay your tuition fees and fund your living expense. And if there are 
jobs available, readily available for students back home to study at school. The sad situation is jobs are not readily available for students, especially during school time. Let me explain. So in Norway, the jobs are structured in such a way that you're on call base. So you don't have a fixed part-time job. So the jobs are not even qualified to be called part-time jobs. That's how sad the situation is. So you can't boldly say you have a part-time job that you can that works around your schedule. If the jobs do not work around your schedule, you would have to work around the job schedule. Meaning anytime they call you, you will have to be on your feet and go to work. So the on-call jobs are like kitchen assistant jobs, which I have done for a very long time. I've done that for more than two years, so I can say I know the ins and outs. So the first time I did a kitchen assistant job, I was really lucky to have one on campus that sort of worked around my schedule. But then it is very rare to get such jobs in Norway. So you'd have to make sure you're residing or your school is in areas where they need on call workers. So for instance, if you live in Oslo, then it becomes very easy to rush to your on call job when you're cold. Especially for days you do not have class because most of the jobs call you at 6 a.m. to come to work at 7 a.m. And if you have class, say at 8 a.m., you can't go to work that day. And mind you, you would have to maintain a certain level of grades. So in smaller cities, the restaurants close around 6 p.m. When will you go to work and when will you close from work? Meaning you'll be doing two hours a day, sometimes 30 minutes a day. I remember my first job that I got, which was a cleaning job, which was in Oslo. I could work only one hour a day after traveling for almost three hours. So sometimes you would have to be compromising your academics for those jobs. So in short, the readily available jobs are very difficult to work around. Unless vacation, then you can have a fixed schedule sort of. So you somewhat know it's a part-time job, but it's a seasonal period. My advice is do not bank on the jobs that are there. Especially when you feel you're desperate and you need a job, you do not get shit. And another thing you should notice is Norway is a very expensive country. We, we can't overemphasize on this. Norway is really expensive. Th there are a lot of cash traps in the country that you might not know. I don't remember the number of times I've eaten out. I don't normally eat out, but then I'm very frugal when it comes to spending. But then there is still a limit to how much you can save. So if you would want to uh, bank on your savings to be able to pay tuition fees, it becomes so difficult and you become so stressed out. So the video was getting too long, I had to make a part three. Depression is really real among international students in Norway. It is real. So do not come stressed out about how to pay your tuition fees. During my time, tuition, tuition was free. I didn't need to pay tuition fees. I only needed to fund my living expense. And then it was still a big stress. Adding the tuition fees to this, it is, it is, it is serious. So please, my advice is if you want to study in Norway, make sure you have a source of fund, maybe loans from your home country or loans from international institutions, or make sure you have a scholarship from your home country or scholarship from international organizations or in scholarship from the university. Then life will be somewhat easy. I tell people that the system is meant to frustrate international students or internationals in general. So when you come, and you, you enter into the system without having anything to fall back to, the system is happy. And then that is when you get more and more frustrated because something is there, it's not supposed to make you frustrated, but then all of a sudden you just start getting tense and anxious. Please, if you have any other source of income or any other country you would want to go to, I think you should consider that. There's one major problem when internationals want to get a job is the language barrier. They are always cold feet. 
when they need to employ internationals because of the language barrier. So you either immerse yourself, when I say immerse yourself, dip yourself into the, the whole culture, into the whole element of living in the country. Immerse yourself into everything you can. That's the only way you can survive it. But if you're not ready for any of that to assimilate or to be colonized again, please find somewhere else. And sorry for those coming from English countries. It gets so hard when you come into the country. Forget what you see on Google that says, oh, Norway is an English speaking country. It is not. I am sorry it is not. When you come and you want to work, there are jobs, yeah, you can survive as an international, but then there is a limit to how much of those jobs you can get sometimes it's even nicer when you just show the zeal of trying to learn another person's language it's it increases your level of acceptance but when you decide to um no i don't think i need to learn a language i'm sorry sometimes you don't get a job based on that or the jobs you get might not be able to fund whatever you need to fund and now the tuition fees are on the high side you need to immerse yourself start learning the language as fast as you can especially how to count how to how to be polite in the language is also a big thing you have to do so if that's what you want to do make sure you immerse yourself into the culture and traditions of the land and another thing you can do is to choose your courses wisely at the beginning of the semester especially with the elective courses there are some forms of flexibility so you can choose some elective courses that can give you maybe a free day one single free day is enough for you or two single free days so say wednesday and saturday that's going to be 16 hours if you work from morning to 4 p.m monday saturday and saturdays you get extra money so try as much as possible to choose your, your courses wisely and if you get a job that can take you saturday sunday and maybe one day of the week you're good to go but then it becomes so difficult to get said jobs so I promise this is the final part on this. There are jobs that you can do that can give you that a level of flexibility, which is the most important thing, especially during academic session. So when school is in progress, one job that I found so flexible was working with Fedora. Fedora was so awesome, oh my God. I wish they sponsored in this video, but then Fedora was awesome because your, the shift comes like two weeks before and then you can just check your timetable, check your schedule and then fix the time. And with Fedora, you can get your 20 hours. You, all what you need is to get a good bicycle, invest in a good bicycle. That's just it. Fedora is awesome. I don't know. I, I always tell people that I owe them this ad because I enjoyed my time there, but I was quite unfortunate that I couldn't work with them for longer. So Fedora is one awesome option for you. It's food delivery, but then it's fun. I don't know, for me, I was just so happy. I'm a girl, but then I could do it. And there was just this joy in delivering food to people and then seeing their faces light up. It was really awesome. So Fedora is one option for you. Another option for you is to get teaching assistant positions on campus. I did this for almost my entire period on campus like I did I was a teaching assistant because I love to teach and I don't know the, the the opportunity just came by like by divine divine <laughs> intervention so I got to teach and it's one option for you the pay is so good the starting pay was really high the pay for teaching assistantship is really good. It's not like the US and Canada, you, you, you have to apply for assistantship position, no. You would have to be very active in class, make sure you make good grades, especially your first semester, make sure you make very good grades in those courses. And mostly the elective courses are the ones that they need the teaching assistant to do very well in school. And then at the end of the semester, speak to the professor if you will need a teaching assistant for the next cohort. It's an awesome option for you. Combining that with Fedora, you're good to go. Another option for you is a cleaning job. Cleaning jobs are so flexible because you might have like two hours and some jobs, some cleaning jobs are just for weekends, Saturday, Sunday, or in the evenings. Most cleaning jobs are in the evenings. 
very flexible some are also in the mornings and some of the cleaning jobs you can get fixed part-time job and you can do that for your whole study period combining all these three you're good to go but then it's also very difficult navigating this and navigating study but then these are options that can yeah, they are foolproof options for you to survive and one reason I love cleaning jobs is I do not have to deal with co-workers. Some cleaning jobs you just assign a particular house, assign a particular office, because people are trash. Most people that you would work with are trash. It's just best when you have a cleaning job, you just go wear your headset, do your cleaning and you're good to go. Sometimes you're paid for two hours for a cleaning job of one hour. Sometimes you get very good pay if you get a very good place or a very good cleaning company. So find a good cleaning company. They can work around your study schedule and most times they do not need language proficiency. So all the study jobs I've mentioned, they do not need any language proficiency, mostly English. So another option for you is waiting jobs. If you're a waitress or a waiter, very good job for you. You can go at nine, so you can decide to go weekends for waiting jobs. Friday, Saturday, Saturday, if you're good. You can go at 4 p.m. and close at 12 p.m. because it's in the weekend, so you can rest. Or you can go on the days you know you don't have lectures early in the morning. You can go maybe on a Tuesday because your class on Wednesday starts at 12, so you can be able to survive during the day, rest during the day, because they require you to be at work till like 12 a.m. That's midnight, so you'll be sleeping around 2 p. 2 a.m. And what time will you wake up and go to class? So just work around the schedule based on when you have your class. Then the last one, which is not so formal, not so official, are side gigs. The side gig economy so you can babysit you can clear grass you can help people lift heavy items you can help people clean up their apartments when you're moving out or moving in you can braid hair you can baba hair you can polish shoes you can do it everything your skills are relevant so before you can build a skill if it's just tailor it you can do when you come you patch your classmates things just be good at the little skill you have this is a skill I am giving you I can't tell you how much this skill has helped me just talking in front of a camera it has put me on places because I was working with an agency where I was making videos for them because I make hair and I make videos I was good to go so I was just making hair videos I just stand in front of the camera make my hair and sometimes do a voiceover and I get paid for it so those are options you can do your skills your skills with all this I hope you can survive Norway being an international student there and the thing is all these things I've mentioned are very relevant in every other country not just Norway and I'll see you in the next video bye bye